Hi there. This is build one in Onshape. It's actually this one right here, which I already built. And that's no fun. So we're gonna build build the whole thing together from scratch. Couple tips before we get started. I've got my measured drawing here with me. I like to have that visible at all times. And strongly recommend you get a mouse. Um, doing 3D modeling with the trackpad is really hard. It's totally possible, but it's really hard. All right, let's get started. We're gonna make a new document in Onshape. We're gonna call this Build One Live. Create the public document. Uh, okay, so let's get started with Onshape. Uh, I have a mouse and I'm using my right mouse button. I'm clicking down and rotating. This is me orienting around the space. And notice very quickly, stuff gets crazy and I get lost. Go back to isometric and it will reset your view. These three things are called your primary world planes. You can leave them on, but the interface gets cluttered very quickly. So I tend to go up and click the little eye to turn those off. And actually, you know what? I'm going to leave the top plane on for just a sec. What I want to do is build this in, an a, in a subtractive fashion. So here's what I mean by that. I'm imagining the shape on the right. I started out as a solid rectangular prism. That was 5 inches wide by 3 inches long and then 1 and a half inches tall. So what I'm going to do is start by building that object, that block, and then I'm going to slice pieces away. First, I wanna make sure my units for my document are correct. So I'm gonna go up here to workspace unit and we are in inches, so I'm happy with that. Uh, the way that Onshape works is similar to other professional 3D modeling software is you do sketches on surfaces, you do 2D geometry, and then you move back to three dimensions to do some extrusions. So let's do it. I'm gonna make my first sketch and I have to select a plane and I'm just gonna have it on the main top plane and now that I have a sketch, I'm gonna go ahead and hide top because it's gonna get confusing. And then I wanna actually orient that direction. I'm gonna go make a rectangle and it does not have the correct dimensions right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit return and I'm gonna make it three by five. So that dimension should be three. And then I messed up and didn't include that dimension correctly and that's wrong. So we're gonna to go to the dimension tool which is really nice, and click on that dimension. It's a double click, and change the size. This is really nice and on shape. I click accept. I'm gonna go back to isometric view. What's really nice about on shape is the ability to change dimensions. And right now my sketch is visible, uh, but I don't see those dimensions. If I wanna go back and edit anything or see those dimensions, you just double click on the sketch and you'll know you're editing a sketch because it brings up this little sketch menu. And then I can look at my dimensions and I can actually move those around. So that information is still there even though it's not visible right now, which is really nice. This is called a parametric 3D modeler, which allows you to make changes to earlier steps and then those, those changes cascade through the rest of the, the object that you're creating. Okay. So I made a rectangle that is five by three, but I need to give it a height of 1.5 inches. So I'm gonna do what's called an extrusion. I'm gonna select that face. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here. And it's a new uh, extrusion, a new, a new um, solid. There's a word that's escaping me right now. And I'm gonna give it a depth of 1.5. And I'm going to accept. I'm gonna reset my view to isometric. And I'm gonna keep the orientation roughly the same. So this dimension is three because that dimension is three. You won't see me uh, taking a 3D model. Let me try to rotate. I'm using some keyboard shortcuts here, which I'm not using well. I'll go to isometric. You're not gonna see me building an object in a different orientation. Um, I don't know why I'm still trying this. It's getting very confusing. Those keys don't work great for me. Here's what I'm trying to say. I want to keep the orientation of my 3D model same as the orientation of the isometric drawing because it's going to make it easier on my brain trying to translate those measurements. Okay, so I mentioned I want to do this in a subtractive fashion, which means I have a big solid block and I want to cut some pieces away. 
there is no right order in which to do this. But essentially, I'm imagining this face right here needs some side pieces cut off and some bottom pieces cut off. And then this face right here needs that cut through the side. And then there's a hole that's going to get drilled down through the top. And you know what? I don't know why I pressed search with Google. I got excited. I got excited. That's probably why I did it. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to build a new sketch to work on the surface and do some 2D geometry, which we will then extrude into 3D. So I have a sketch. I need a plane. There's my plane. And I like to orient to that plane, which is really nice. And I want to make sure that I am in... Okay, so I need to cut this off the side. And I'm going to draw some guidelines. I like to use rectangles for guides. I know everybody does this different, but I'm going to go to the rectangle tool and choose corner rectangle. And I'm going to start on that side for the What did I do? What did I do? I don't know what I did. Sketch plane rectangle Oh, I just let go. I got to drag. And it's going to try to snap to sides for me, which is really nice. I like that. And then I actually want this to go down to 0.75. And there I go again, clicking the wrong thing. So I'm going to go back to the dimension tool, add a dimension, change it to 0.75. Okay. So that rectangle is going to give me the location of this corner. And then I know that there's supposed to be this 30 degree angle. So here's how we're going to handle that. I'm going to take the line tool and notice when you hover over, you get these little, the, see the little L right there. That's the keyboard shortcut. You definitely want to learn the keyboard shortcuts. All right. And I'm going to make a line that's just way too long. Okay. And then I'm going to use the dimension tool to change some information about that line. So here's what I want. I want that line started from here to here. And I want this angle right there to be 30 degrees. So I'm going to use the dimension tool and click on the object. Now at first it thinks I want length. So I just clicked and let go. Now I'm going to hover over this side and click again. And it says, oh, you want an angle, don't you? Isn't that slick? So I'm going to click down one more time and then change that to 30 degrees. And when I press return, watch what happens to the line segment. Look at that. Super cool. All right. Now I'm going to draw another line, which this is not going to be immediately obvious why I'm doing that. I'm going to hover over. And when I get to the midpoint, bam, see that little box? That tells me I'm at the middle of that segment. So I'm going to click down. And notice as you rotate around, it's trying to snap, snap to perpendicular. And there's that little image right there that's showing it's perpendicular and snap. So here's what I've done is I've actually drawn a line right through the middle of this object. And I've drawn one of these shapes. I did that because there's something you can do in Onshape and most professional modelers that is really a huge time saver. And it's called mirror. It's right here. You can also mirror objects in three dimensions. So we're just going to do 2D mirroring today. I am going to take mirror and then it says select a mirror line. So I'm going to take that mirror line and then select entities, that one. And then look at that. Oh my goodness. I have mirrored that object. Okay. Now let me show you why this is cool. I'm going to accept that sketch and I'm going to reset to an isometric view. And then I'm going to hover over some sections. Notice how it highlights that triangle. I didn't actually draw a triangle, but on shape knows there's a triangle formed by my geometries. So I'm going to single click on that and notice the little number one. Then I'm going to hover over this one, single click, notice the number two. So there are two faces or two 2D geometries that have been selected. Now I'm going to go up to extrude and we're going to use extrude to subtract rather than create material. So extrude. By default, it thinks I want to add material. See that? And it's listing. It's this face and that face. There's an arrow saying which direction. But I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to click Remove. And then I got some options. I can change the depth or I can drag all the way through the object. I'm going to select that. Reset my view to isometric. And just like that, I have cut that edge and that edge off, which is awesome. I get excited about that. Okay, so I'm going to go back and cut these little guys off the bottom. Make a new sketch on that face. All right, so it's 0.625 by whatever this height is. So it looks like the 0.5 measures this middle, the 0.75 measures this top, and this 1.5 is the whole thing. So let's see, uh, 1.5 minus 0.75. Is okay, so this height is 0.25. So here's my game. I'm going to go back to rectangles. 
I'm gonna go here, and this time, I'm gonna see if I can do this right this time. There's a way with a corner rectangle where you just put it anywhere. So I'll make it way too big to give my, my example. Click. And then I think I can type one of the dimensions. Point, there it is. So without hitting return, you start typing the dimension. So that one is point six two five, And then I hit return. See how it shrinks down? And then now it's highlighted the other dimension, which is supposed to be point two five. Hit return. And there you go. You got it. So I could play the same game on the other side, draw another rectangle, which is totally fine. You could mirror again. What I would do if I was building this uh, and not trying to show individual features is before I had sliced off these sides, you remember I made that mirror line? I would have made the geometry on the left side for both this cut and this rectangle, use the same mirror line and then mirror it across the other side. That's a faster way of doing it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and do 0.625 and 0.25. See, I screwed it up. But you know what, that's okay. Because I have a dimension tool. So I'm gonna go to dimension, and that one is the wrong one. Double click to 0.625. It's gonna fix it. I'm gonna double check this one, and that is the correct dimension. So I will accept that sketch, and you probably know what I'm about to do. Select that surface, select that surface, extrude, remove, and then I'm gonna zoom out, move my workspace a little bit, grab the arrow and pull it all the way through. Go ahead and reset my view to isometric. And we're getting close, look at that, we cut those two sides off. Now we just gotta cut through here and drill a hole. So I'm gonna click sketch, grab that face, rotate to it, zoom out a little bit. Okay, so I know that these side walls are half an inch thick. So here's what I'll do. I'll use my rectangles again. Uh, what's going on here? Why? Oh, it won't click on this. See, I hover. It sees that, but it won't see that corner because that's not actually on the sketch plane. It's behind the sketch plane. That point is actually back here. It's not up here. So it'll only let me grab this one. That's okay. I can adjust. All right, so rectangle. And really all I want is to go up. And I need this to be 0.5. And this to be, I don't know, 1.5. I don't even care how tall it is. I just need a dimension here across. And then, you guessed it, I like to mirror. So I'm gonna draw a line from the midpoint right there, which is good. And then we're going to mirror this geometry to that side. So that's good, we're done mirroring. And then, zooming out, that's really, those are the spaces I wanna keep. I really wanted to cut out of the middle. So I did, uh, nope, not what I wanted. Go back to the sketch. I'm gonna get a rectangle, and actually what I want is a rectangle that goes from there to there. Because that gives me now the surface that I need to extrude, remove through the object. Yes, those of you who know Onshape, I am sure there are faster ways to do this. Not my goal to be as fast as possible. We're trying to learn how to use the workspace. All right. So last piece is this hole, which is up two and a half inches from there and in, looks like one inch from the inside of that rail. So let's make a sketch on that plane. Can I rotate that? Yeah, I sure can. Zoom out. All right. And I like rectangles for guides. So I'm going to go up and over. Uh, in one inch, nope, 2.5 inches and one inch. This now is the center of my circle, which needs to be one inch in diameter, which I can now select as a surface. I can remove 
and call it good. We'll reset my view to isometric and take a peek. And there you have it. Build one done in Onshape. Thanks for playing.